Welcome to Introduction to Procedural Asset Creation, Lesson 1. In this lesson, we are going to build up the basic structure uh, of points and lines that will create the underlying foundation for our procedural skate park ramp. All right. Now, if you aren't very familiar with the Houdini UI or working with the nodes inside of Houdini, I'd recommend watching the Introduction to Houdini courses provided by Game Tutor. Uh, just to get more familiar with it, as this course is more about showing how the different parts of the procedural pipeline work with Houdini Substance and Unity. Alrighty, so let's get started with our skate park ramp. So any procedural asset starts out with a geometry node inside of Houdini over here. So what I want to do is I want to hit the tab key on the keyboard with my mouse over this graph view over here and start typing in geometry. And that will give me a geometry node that we can then start to place points and lines and geometry inside of. This is a container, basically, that holds all of that data. All right. So what I want to do is just give this a name. I'm just going to call it Simple Ramp for now. All righty. Then I'm going to double click on this node. And that jumps inside of the node. Now, by default, all geometry nodes come with a file node in it. And that's just loading up the default um, geometry that SideFX has provided us. So we don't need that anymore. I'm just going to hit delete. Alrighty. So now to get started with our actual skate park ramp, we want to start to build out the, the major structure. Okay. And that major structure really is the ramp itself. So it's the angle of that ramp. All right. So the best thing to do in this case is actually drop down a circle. Okay. Because what we can do is we can actually utilize the, um, the circle to build up a ramp that has a, a particular angle. So we don't have to calculate the angle ourselves. All right. And I'm a big fan of always trying to utilize the primitives that come with Houdini. And I modify them so that I don't have to do a lot of the trigonometry or linear algebra to build up shapes. Now, that being said, that it does come into play and it is always useful to understand a little bit of triangles and trigonometry, your basic algebra and linear algebra for this stuff, but not completely necessary as you can make a lot of procedural assets without that knowledge using just the base nodes that come with Houdini. All right. So to get this started, I like to always point my objects in the Z direction. So I'm going to put this particular circle on the YZ plane. All righty. And I want to switch it over to use a polygon type. All right. There we go. Now polygons are a lot easier to work with um, in this case. And because we have it set to polygon, I can actually create an open arc. And a reason why I want an open arc is because I only need a quarter of this circle. So I'm going to actually type in 90 as the angle. And when I do that, you'll notice that I get only a quarter of that angle. So this allows me to pick a certain portion of that circle to utilize for our ramp. So in this case, I just want 90 because that is like we're building a quarter pipe almost. Okay. So this by itself is not ready to be used as a ramp as this angle is being created from this point over here. And we need to get this point to be at world zero over here so that when I change this angle value, it's actually changing appropriately as if we were increasing the angle on our skate park ramp. So to do that, I need to rotate it. So I need to create a transform node. I'm going to drop that down. And I need to rotate it negative 90 degrees. So when I do that, you'll notice now when I change that angle value, it's actually starting from the world zero and increasing that angle. Alrighty. But we still aren't ready yet because our circle now is below <clears throat> the actual grid itself. And we actually want this thing to be created from this world zero point. All right, so we need another transform node. Alrighty. And what I'm going to do is utilize a built-in global variable to get the distance below this world zero point that this circle is actually sitting at. And I need the, the minimum or the negative y values to find out how far down in space this particular circle is. Okay. And to do that, we can utilize the dollar y min global variable. Now, if you're not too familiar with uh, some of these built-in variables or expressions, I recommend that you watch the introduction to expressions on Game Tutor, and then come back to this video as 
there's a lot of great information in that video. All right, so I'm gonna type in Y min, hit enter, and you'll notice that we actually move farther down from the grid. And that is because we took all those minimum values and they're all negative, so we moved in negative space. So I need to actually multiply that by a negative value to get it to go back up. All right, so now we have a circle that we can create an angle from world zero so that just that it's easier um, and cleaner when a designer is actually using this ramp in Unity. Okay? All right. So the next steps that we need to do is actually create the length line. All right. So this will become the baseline that we use. All right. And we need to create that height line. All right. So to do that, I'm going to create two new line nodes here. So I'm going to call this my length line. Oops. All right, and then I need another line. And I'm just hitting tab on the keyboard and typing in line. So this one's going to become our height line. And I always like to name the major nodes in my graph. So when I'm starting to build out larger assets, I don't, I don't lose my place in my graph. So I always know where the major nodes are. Okay, and there's a lot of other different types of organizational features that you can do inside of this graph view. Uh, and we'll save those for a later course. Okay? So the length line, what, what this needs to do is it actually needs to point in the negative z direction, but also be the same length as this ramp angle here that we have. Okay? Now to do that, all we need to do is edit the direction first. Okay? So I want this to point in the negative z direction. There we go. And now the distance is the, is the length of that line. Okay, so we need to feed in an expression to tell this distance value to be the same z distance as our ramp already. And so to do that, what we can do is we can employ the uh, bounding box function. So it's bb box, and then we can type in dot dot forward slash. And what I want to do is I want to take the overall length from this final transform node or xform2. So that's how you actually get data from other nodes. And now I want to use another built-in variable and call this Z size. Z size. And when I do that, you'll notice that the line now is exactly the same length as the length of our ramped curve or ramped circle here. All right. So that's working out perfect. So now we need to do the same process for our height line. And now the height line needs to go and point in positive y direction, which by default it is. Okay? So all we need to do is actually get the y size now from our ramp circle. So again, we're going to type in bb box dot dot forward slash. We're going to go to x form 2, and we want to get d uh, y size. And there you go. So now we're actually the same height. As our curve. So if I go to my side view by hitting dollar four or three or dollar four or five on the keyboard, that will take me to my side view. And then dollar one will take you back into your perspective view. I mean spacebar one, excuse me. Alright. Alright, so now our height line is it pointing in the right direction. It's just, it's the perfect size already. But what we need to do is we actually need to get it so that it's positioned right over here. Now there's a couple ways we can do that. All right, we can transform it. So if I use another transform node, and then I use that same BB box uh, description to get it to situate itself right at the Z minimum size of this line. So let's do that. So I need to translate it in Z because we're in the Z direction. So I have to go to BB box dot dot forward slash x form 2 because I want the information from my x form 2 and then I want the d z min now when I do that you'll notice that this line is now perfectly placed and if I were to change any aspect of my curved line you'll notice that that line is actually moving with it now that's all fine and everything <clears throat> but I wanted to show you guys another way so if I take my length line here and let's turn off the templating for our ramp circle. 
you'll notice that we have two points in our length line and they both have numbers associated to them all right or ids so the we have a point zero and we have a point one so what i can do is i can actually copy this height line right the one previous that's still sit, sitting at the center world i can actually copy that line to both these points so if i drop down a copy node all right You'll notice that I can copy that line, this height line, to both those points. Alrighty. But we don't want two points, we just want the one. So what we need to do is we need to use a delete node. So I'm going to hit tab and type in delete. Alrighty. And now what do we want to delete? I want to delete point zero. Okay, so what I have to do is come up into the properties for my delete node here. And I'm going to say delete selected. I need to set the entity type to points because I want to delete the point. And then the pattern, I want to type in zero because that will get rid of that point. And now we're left with just a single point. And so now what I can do is I can replace the template in my copy node with that new single point and pipe my height line <clears throat> into the copy node. And you'll notice now we have that line situated perfectly at the end of that curve. So it's, there's many ways to accomplish the same thing inside of Houdini. Uh, it all comes down to the efficiency of the graph um, and what kind of situation you are in. And this really comes with a lot of just experience using Houdini and um, wondering how uh, or how to build uh, things for designers inside of Unity. So, because the graphs could get really large and it's just, it slows down the actual procedural asset inside of Unity. But we do have another course um, on Game Tutor that goes over proper workflow processes and um, how to um, optimize your graphs. And it we talk about how the different nodes process all these points and lines differently. Some are more expensive than others. So knowing that information is good. So I definitely recommend you check that out as well. <clears throat> all righty. So. What I want to do is turn off my templating there. Alrighty. Now what I want to do is I want to actually merge all this data together. We have our circle ramp, we have our height line, and we have our length line. So all I need to do is drop down a merge node, like so. Drop down that, and whoops, wrong one. This actually goes there. And then this guy goes into there. And what we have is the basic structure of our ramp and that is how you create the blueprints for this particular simple ramp now think these can get way complicated um, depending on how complex the object is that you're trying to make so in the simple example um, that is how we constructed the blueprint or the underlying foundation that will set us up for the next few lessons thanks so much <laughs>